Welcome back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. Today we're going to assemble this, the enclosure for the Prusa XL. This was designed by Voxel 3D and I downloaded this from Printables. Let's take a look at the parts I've already printed on my 3D printer, my Prusa XL. So you can see all these parts. There's the top, these side rails, these pieces. These pieces were a challenge to print. These pieces were a bit of a challenge to print. I printed them together and they crashed. So I printed these one at a time. This one turned out pretty well. This one actually had a weak spot that I had to epoxy. And I, I think it's gonna work out. If it does, great. If it doesn't, I'll have to reprint this. But here are all the parts. And also we've got this kit in here, which I'm gonna open up from AliExpress. Uh, and I'll put the link in that. That's, that's all of the hardware and the acrylic panels for this. Let's take a look. So I'm just opening it up now. It came FedEx, obviously from China. It's well packaged, well protected. Bunch of foam pieces here. Here's the acrylic sheeting. And then in this packet is the hardware. I'll open this up. So this is a packet of a lot of these heat set brass threaded inserts. Some large nuts, some um, Allen wrench or hex drive screws, a whole bunch of batteries. Some locking washers, not locking nuts and some washers. So let's first start putting the heat set inserts into the proper places. They're described very well on this build sheet. You can see the circles. We're going to put a heat set insert in each one of these spots on all these parts. By the way, there are eight of these polycarbonate sheets all precisely cut and drilled to allow this to be assembled. I felt very comfortable in ordering this kit from AliExpress because I previously built an unoriginal Prusa dry box, which I've got a video on, using a kit as well from Ali, AliExpress, and it was great. It was absolutely perfect, and it turned out really well. Consider watching that uh, video on my channel. Each of these parts is well labeled. The first letter is for edge, bottom, or center. The next is for back or front. The next is for left or right. This is the revision number, and this arrow shows its orientation, arrow up. The hardware looks great. Here are those heat set inserts, <clears throat> locking small nuts, larger nuts, these captive nuts, <clears throat> and washers, and a variety of sizes of screws in different diameters. We've got threes and four millimeter ones. So we've got those heated inserts, and this is a strange shape so I put it on this small block just to keep it in a good position. I'm going to heat that up and literally it's just going to be pushed right in there. And then if it's a little proud we can flatten it out with a chisel take a little of that extra off so it's flat. Put another one in too. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, so we're putting in these brass heat set inserts. This piece I'm holding up on one edge. I'm trying to get that lined up. There it goes. Just put those in nicely and flatten it out. So we don't want any extra material on here getting in our way. This is where the acrylic panels are going to be, and we don't want them to be proud. That's good. So you can see we've got a few of those in there. <clears throat> We're just, this is a piece that's going to hold one plexiglass piece and another. So I'm holding it up on this edge, which is the correct orientation. For these inserts. 
By the way, all of these parts were made with PTEG, which has a higher heat resistance than PLA, because this enclosure is going to be pretty hot, I think, with the heated extrusion, the hot end, and the heated bed. And then just flattening it out. All right. So we've done the top assembly, which is this. Very ungainly, only connected by three screws. It's, it has no strength. All of the strength of this enclosure is basically given by the plexiglass sheet. So at this point, very flimsy. Just be really careful. Now we're going to move on to step two to add EFL and EFR. I'm going to add these to this frame and they go here. Again, these screws go into the slot, come out this hole, and get screwed into this heat insert. So these bars are going to be like this. This is the appearance now after step two. These bars have been added. Again, incredibly flimsy. So now we're going to add the EBL and EBR, which go back here. Okay, here we've got step three done. These parts have an arrow listed right here. So that's how we know that one goes up. And this one, that one goes up. So now we have the frame completed through step number three. All right, we need to add a few more of these heat set inserts into each of the corners of the top. You can see this where the hinge is. Each of these get one. And on these pieces, CBR and CBL, they get one here as well as these areas here. So we're going to put one here and here in all four corners of the top. Okay, so step four is completed with the CBL and the CBR. There's a heat set insert in here, here, and here. We got a screw going here, here, and across here. So now we're going to now we're going to mount this roof to the frame. Okay, so all the parts now of this are together. These were a bit of a challenge to get these four. These. So we had these two to get, and these two, but it turned out okay, and now we're going to flip it over. Takes time, take your time, be slow. It's, it's a little bit tenuous at this point. So here it is. Now it's time to put on some plexiglass sheets, which is going to give it the true strength. So we'll put the side panels on first. Once you unwrap the plexiglass acrylic sheets, the polycarbonate sheets, they're all labeled, which is quite fantastic. I'm surprised to see that. But these are the these are the panels for the side panel. We're going to take the film off that's on each side and and put this in and this will be the first step to getting a structurally sound project right now it's very wobbly be careful not to break anything so at this point when you put the panel up be sure that you've got these heat set inserts I, I'm missing four here and one here which I'm going to have to put in freehand uh, which we'll do right now to help with assembly I put a couple posts here so I can push against this and that's and these are lining up incredibly well so we're going to finish putting all the screws around here and do the other side. Two tools are very helpful. If the hole doesn't perfectly line up, an awl will help orient it. And we can use a small screwdriver in the gap to push things over. Leave all the screws loose once you get them started, which will facilitate putting all the other ones back in there. Now that I've got all those in, and they fit really quite well, I'm going to use this T-handle to tighten them all up. This really makes it a lot easier than just using a basic um, Allen wrench. 
So we've got both side panels on. All the screws were first put in loosely, then tightened up, and it's given it quite a bit of, of rigidity. It's much stronger. Now we're going to put this panel on and this panel on, and that will really help strengthen things up and get us in the right direction. So we're going to take the covers off this, get this started, tighten these screws, same with this, be back. So this panel doesn't perfectly fit, but the way to get it going is to start one screw and then we're going to see if we can coerce this into fitting in here with the use of a screwdriver. Okay, all these panels are on. You can see I have a drill with a drill bit. Sometimes I had a couple holes that needed a little bit of opening up, so I just drilled through the acrylic only so I could get the screw in. You may have to do that. But it looks really good. I chipped a small piece out of here. I'm just gluing it. But now we've got a really structurally strong enclosure. I'm excited about that. Time to move on to the next step. The next step is to glue these rare earth magnets, 8 by 20 millimeters, into these openings on both sides. We're going to use super glue for that. They have a very nice fit. Okay, now to assemble the bottom section. For step one, we need to have the SPMs mounting to the frame. So these are these pieces, SPM, and we're going to take off that orange strip that we have already to mount that here, but we need heat inserts here so we can attach the, 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 the uh, polycarbonate frame here, and then these pieces will fit in the front and again, we need more of those heat inserts here, so we're going to put those in right now. One unfortunate thing is that the holes in the FCB, R, and the L are oval. And, we, and I, I, so I put the plexiglass sheet on here, and basically it needs to be close to the upper part of these. So keep that in mind um, when, you put the, when you place those. It's interesting that my kit did not have enough of these brass heat set inserts so I had already purchased a bag of a hundred of these three millimeter ones so fortunately I've got some uh, but it, it looks like it was about six short so on the printer we need for this next step for the SPM assembly and the FCB assembly we need to take these fill strips off as well as these because then we're going to mount these pieces here with four millimeter eight millimeters long screws and t-bolts and then the heat set inserts on the outside to accept the polycarbonate frame so we'll take these off and put this in so to allow these four millimeter screws to go through these holes, I had to drill them out with a four millimeter bit because they were a little bit tight. Just to illustrate, these are the T-nuts. They're gonna go into the slot and then when you turn them, they're gonna lock in place and hold everything secure. I put the T-nuts on the screws, got them lined up and just cranked them into place and they automatically turned and locked it in. So there's my first SPM left. And now we're gonna do this other, this SPM right over here. So I have the screws in and these T-nuts just put in vertically and just slightly secured and again with the heat certs outside just line that up like that and when we tighten it they should turn that one just turned so wow there we go, locked in place. So I got these in. This one, I put the nut on, the screw put it up there and it's good. This one, I 
I had to put the nut underneath and the screw and then lift it up with the screwdriver and then it engaged. And now I'm going to put the plexiglass sheet on. And then move this bar, move the FCB bar, this one, in and out. So it just fits, just like that. So you can see the next step is to put on the hinges, which we've done here. Those are those 10 millimeter screws with a washer and a lock nut. Hinge here, handle here, same deal. And the, the door draft stop, that's what this is. See the little magnet that I put in? It didn't quite fit, so I put the magnet over the spot, used the heat set insert, melted it, and it literally just popped right in there. It was beautiful. And we got those, those secured. And then this little piece at the top, there's a magnet in that as well. We got that, again, with the heat set insert to um, just melt it in there, and it, it worked out really well. Now we're going to mount these doors on these hinges here, just like that, with the uh, longer 4 millimeter screws. First thing we're going to, we mounted this small magnet in the magnet mount here, right there again with melting it, and again the 4 millimeter by 8 and lock nuts. I'm going to put this right in here, right on each side of the control panel. Okay, I fit these covers again, but had to take off a little segment because it's shorter, so I just cut it, put it back in here on both sides. So that's nice, that prevents anything from falling in that groove. When it comes to these magnets, you've got to be careful that basically they're lined up in the correct orientation. Unfortunately, three of the ones I put in repulse each other. So that's not so good. So I've got this in here. This was supposed to be sticking, but it's, it's pushing away. So I've got three of these magnets I need to heat back up and flip them around because I've got them in the wrong orientation. So just be cautious. Check the uh, the, which side of the magnet is going to be highly attractive. One other quick point is that the screw for these rivets, it's pushed in from the top on this side and the nut goes here, but on this side the screw goes from the bottom and the nuts on the top, just because these are identical pieces just flipped upside down. So where the, where the hexagon shape is, that's where the nut goes, the circular shape is where the screw goes. We installed the top, it fit beautifully. The doors work well. Got the magnets at the top and the bottom working. This won't close with the USB in place, so we're printing right now. But we got those set up. Side panels are nice. Obviously it's set up for up to five heads. Really a good project, I'm very happy with it. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. This is the enclosure for the Prusa XL. It turned out really great. This plexiglass sheet and the hardware kit from AliExpress was about $130, in my opinion, well worth it. The build was great. I had a little issue with a couple of these pieces that I had to print them separately, but it turned out really well and I'm very pleased. Only issue down here is you can't close the door with the USB drive in place, but I'm gonna, we're going to figure that one out and we'll address that. Apart from that, it's been really good. If this was helpful, thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thank you.